I think we can all agree that plastic waste is certainly a problem. Here's a wild fact. Roughly 10,000 tons of plastic waste ends up in the ocean every year. That's the weight equivalent of 2,000 full-size male African elephants or 7,142 average-sized cars. That's a lot of plastic. For today's experiment, we're gonna see if we can take some plastic waste and turn it into a real working boomerang. For this experiment, we're specifically looking for the number two on the recycling scale. This indicates that the material is HDPE or high density polyethylene. Also, we got almost all this information from the YouTube channel Brothers Make. They have this awesome channel dedicated solely to working with recycled plastic. I'm putting a link to their channel in the description below. So we're gonna pick up all the trash we can and then we're gonna separate the plastics based off of the material that they are. So the first step is collecting some plastic waste. So we're gonna go out into the wild here in Los Angeles and do a beach cleanup. You've got to be kidding me. Y'all, major find. Okay, so we're here at like our local recycling depot just to get some extra HDPE. Here's like a really great source for HDPE, which is uh, milk cartons. There's also a lot of caps that are just kind of sitting around. This is perfect. This is also HDPE. I think we can actually mix this red bucket and these red and maybe some of the uh, milk cartons as well. So we're gonna have like kind of like a clear, a red and a black. This is the boomerang that we're trying to basically replicate with the recycled plastic. This was given to me from Victor Poulin. He's kind of like the YouTube boomerang guy. I'm also putting a link to his YouTube channel in the description below. I uh, use that as just a little template. And we've now made this surface, of which we're gonna put the plastic into this as a mold. That'll like kind of like hold it in place. And so we wanna keep some pressure on it so that it stays flat and that it basically cools flat. Roughly speaking, 136 grams is like what we're shooting for. So the next step is we're actually gonna melt this stuff down. Now this is really weird because it almost feels like you shouldn't be able to do this, but you can. You have to use parchment paper. You just take like a sheet of this and you line it in here. And that's just so that the uh, plastic doesn't stick to the panini press. This also helps this whole thing like not stick to itself. These gloves also, this is something we learned from Brothers Make. They're really awesome. Um, it's because you just don't feel the heat through these. So I'm sure other gloves probably work, but like, man, they figured it out and they were right. I'm gonna turn this bad boy on high. Also, we're gonna be wearing masks once this starts melting down. Now, it shouldn't give off toxic fumes, but we just wanna err on the side of precaution. Ooh, boy, look at that. Oh, geez, 500. It ain't easy making boomerangs, but at least it's honest. Okay, so it has been a full day. This is kind of a cool moment because it's kind of like the reveal. Um, and so we'll see what we made. We'll see what color at least, like the marbling effect of the, the clear, or kind of like the white, the red, and the black. So let's see what we got. Oh wow, it kind of reminds me of like lava. You can see here too, this is kind of exactly what I was talking about, how the plastic shrinks. Even though we had all of the weight pushing down on it and it was smashed up against this when we started, like it shrunk almost a half of an inch. Well, it looks really cool. It's this black and red kind of marbling effect. It'll look even cooler like as we begin to shape it. But like, that's really cool. Like, think about this. We're not even close to the real boomerang yet, but we created this out of recycled plastic that we found on the beach. 
here's how we're gonna do this. We're gonna work with this belt sander and we have different grits. What the grit means is there's like a number associated with that. That number tells you essentially like how coarse the paper is. So we have a 50, a 60, and a 120. And so the 50 is just gonna like take a ton of material off. Like it's just gonna like run through it. Really long strings of plastic be flying every which way. Kind of in between there is the 60. 120 is like a little bit nicer, meaning like it's gonna take a lot longer to take more material off, but it also makes it more smooth. Once we're done with the belt sander, we're gonna basically move on to other type of sanding, which is uh, using these little pads. So that's what we're gonna be working with in order to get like a smooth outer edge. But really for sculpting, we're gonna be working with the belt sander. And then to get like a nice fine polish, we're gonna get all the way to like some of these crazy grit numbers, like 1000. So we're gonna go all the way up to 1500 and that's gonna give us like a really nice, like shiny look on the plastic. So there's a really great video about how boomerangs work um, that we've already done. And we'll play that right now. A boomerang is essentially two airfoils or wings slapped together in a banana shape. When you throw the boomerang, you throw it with a spin and it spins roughly at around 10 revolutions per second. However, the top wing is actually creating ever so slightly more lift than the bottom wing. And that's because this top wing is moving ever so slightly faster than the bottom one. This in turn then creates a torque. And now while you might think that that torque would then eventually flip the entire boomerang over, it doesn't. And it doesn't because it's spinning. And so the boomerang has angular momentum. So what that torque does though, is it changes the direction of the angular momentum, thus returning the boomerang back to the place where it was thrown. So we, there's this happy balance actually, where the boomerang is a certain weight um, and is creating enough lift for it to return back to your hand. So we already know roughly speaking what that is because we're replicating it with this wooden one. So this wooden one is right around 136, 137 grams. So we're gonna try to get close to that, like right around 140. This is recycled plastic, so we can use this again. So we're gonna collect all of the HDPE that we don't use in this container. Uh, so that we can melt it down for another project later. So like none of this is gonna go to waste, but we need to like trim this boomerang down quite a bit. So we're gonna sand the living crap out of this. There we go. This is our finished product thus far. Just such a cool marbling effect. So because of the coloring, we've decided to name this thing the Darth Morang for all my Star Wars fans out there. Also, this ended up being um, 150 grams, so it's very close to our wood boomerang. So we're gonna go to a local nearby park called Kenneth Hahn Park, and we're gonna toss this, and we're gonna see if we can actually get it to function like a regular boomerang. <laughs> like throw, I'm really impressed. Like I really feel like I can catch this. Let's do it. Okay, what a cool experiment. We went out to the beach, we did a beach cleanup, we collected a bunch of plastic, we found a bunch of HDPE, which is exactly what we we're looking for. We melted it down in a panini press, we twisted it to get this cool marbling effect. We put it into a boomerang mold, and then we kind of workshopped it till we finally got it to both weigh and look just like a wood boomerang that I got from Victor Pullen. We went out to the park and it worked. I mean, it took a lot of throws because it was really windy, but the boomerang works so well. And so here is our Darth Maulerang. A really cool experiment. Like, yes, we made kind of like a little bit of like a toy out of recycled plastic, but you can do other stuff with recycled plastic. Like you can make other really cool, fun, functional items. If we put enough focus, energy, and effort, we can really reuse a lot of these products. Like this was kind of just a demonstration of making something really fun and cool, but I feel like we could really use plastic in a lot of better ways. So let me know in the comment section below what other things we should make with plastic, recycled plastic, specifically HDPE. If you haven't yet, hit that subscribe button and we'll see you really soon.